every step of the way. Like every great space mission, it starts with a launch. In this case, four RS-25 engines, two solid rocket boosters ignite, sending SLS and Orion into the sky. On the way uphill, we'll have a number of jettison events, things coming off the rocket. One of the most visible, these two large solid rocket boosters a little over two minutes into the flight will break away. We'll also have the launch abort system come off once we're high enough, and then three fairings, which are protecting Orion's capsule and service module during the flight through the thicker parts of the atmosphere. Now, after the core stage has consumed its propellants, we'll hear Miko main engine cut off. Those four engines will cut off, the core stage will drop away, handing over propulsion duties to this, the interim cryogenic propulsion stage. Its first job is a perigee raise maneuver. Perigee just means the lowest point of your orbit. This will give us a nice circular path for Orion around our planet. While it's there, we can really check the spacecraft out, make sure everything from electrical systems, guidance, navigation and control, communications are all functioning before we commit it to heading to the moon. And we do that with this, the translunar injection. This will be about an 18 minute firing on today's timeline. And this is done to give us enough energy to get out of low Earth orbit and make our way to the moon. Shortly after that, the ICPS will separate. It'll do a disposal burn, sending it around the moon and into an orbit around the sun. But from there on out, propulsion duties get handed over to the European service module. It's going to make a couple of outbound trajectory correction burns on the way out, critically testing that orbital maneuvering system engine, that large one on the very bottom, that's going to be needed when we start making our maneuvers around the moon to get into what's known as distant retrograde orbit, or DRO. To do that, we're going to do the outbound powered flyby, dipping in about 70 or 80 miles off the lunar surface, really pushing with that large engine. That's going to slingshot us around. We're going to do a final orbit insertion maneuver, and then we will be in DRO, distant retrograde orbit, this dotted line right here. Distant, we're about 40,000 miles off the lunar surface, and retrograde, because the moon orbits the Earth in a counterclockwise fashion, we're going to be going clockwise opposite retrograde. It's a very stable orbit, doesn't require a lot of energy to maintain your space there, really lets us put Orion through the paces, learn about using this spacecraft in, in deep space. But eventually it'll be time to come home. We'll fire up the engines once more, do a departure burn. This is what commits us from departing the moon and heading back home. We'll dip in close to the surface once more for the return powered flyby and execute correction burns on the return transit as we target a splashdown in the Pacific Ocean. Before that happens, the spacecraft separate. The European service module's job is done. It drops away to burn up, revealing the heat shield. This is goal number one for this flight, is testing that heat shield at lunar return velocities, because when we hit the upper atmosphere, we're going to be moving more than 20,000 miles an hour, heating that up to more than 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So really need to make sure that that can withstand that heat of reentry. After it makes it through, parachutes deploy, Orion splashes down in the Pacific, a Navy ship and other recovery assets are standing by to pick it up out of the water and bring an end to the first mission in the Artemis program. So that's all 